psychologically speaking, it was a really interesting relationship because he was um, the most unrequited love of her life. And, uh, you know, and Diana's love was voluminous. It was vast. And so, you know, obviously there was a great attraction between the two of them. I don't know if you saw the news this morning that Jemima Khan cut ties with Netflix over how they are portraying Diana in the upcoming season. Are you... Surprised by that? Not surprised because they, it seems like they've been oh. taking a lot of liberties with uh, her story. Um, with so, so Jemima actually takes exception to the way that the Netflix Crown has been written. This particular act, because I thought Emma did an extraordinary job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know this is what's so so strange about the comparison between, for example, the Spencer movie mm -hmm. and what we saw in The Crown. Because I was actually really surprised that they were actually able to move into such a visceral interaction with Diana, but one that was naturalistically played and so completely believable. Yeah. Because if you play naturalism, it automatically feels as though you're looking at Diana herself. Mm -hmm. And I thought Emma did a great job. Obviously, Obviously, I, I can't really comment on what Jemima is saying, in, sure. you know, about the next um, the next part of the series because we haven't it hasn't been viewed yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know how Jemima has seen it. I guess she I guess she's worked with them on the show as a consultant, and I guess she said in the upcoming season that they they didn't tell the story as compassionately as she had hoped, and she wants to distance herself from it now. Oh, okay. Well, they're by their wrists are slapped. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> I don't know if you've been watching the new uh, CNN documentary um, about Diana at all, too. But it says that um, in the documentary, they said that Hasna Khan was the greatest love of her life. Do you agree with that? I, I, psychologically speaking, it was a really interesting relationship because he was um, the most unrequited love of her life. And, uh, you know, and Diana's love was voluminous. It was vast. And so, you know, obviously there was a great attraction between the two of them. Mm -hmm. But as a result of the fact that her, her the volume of her love was such, but actually it wasn't fully reciprocated, I feel that therefore it can easily be misconstrued as being the major love of her life. The major love of her life was Charles, mm -hmm. followed by the boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, do you think that, like, you know, do you do you remember Diana not wanting to give up on her marriage? Because it says in this documentary that even the day that she got divorced, she wanted to call Charles and speak to him. She was still wearing her wedding ring, uh, her engagement ring. But, do you know, this was not something that she really wanted to wanted to do she, i mean nobody goes into marriage i'm sure thinking divorce but this was not something that she wanted to to give up well diana's love and you will appreciate this being the wonderful woman that you are mm -hmm. diana's love was huge and consistent mm -hmm. sustainable all the way through even to the tragic moment where she signed her signature on the degree nice say mm -hmm. she loved Charles, all the way through all of the experiences that she had, where as a beautiful, evolving woman, she needed to explore her personal power, which sometimes meant moving into personal relationship with the men that she chose to have relationships with, some disastrously, as we know, as we saw with the ending of James, mm -hmm. James Hewitt. Right. Um, and so, you know, Diana, Diana was one of the most unique beings for the quality of her love. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, her love with Charles or for Charles rather was sustainable all the way through.